Is it possible to predict the total downward acceleration due to gravity for any point on the surface of the Earth? Of course it is, and I'm going to show you how. On the Earth, the acceleration due to gravity depends on how far you are from the center of the Earth. At the top of a mountain, you're farther from the center, so there will be a slightly weaker pull. Also, centrifugal force due to the rotation of the Earth reduces the total downward pull, and this is maximized near the equator. This is why the total pull varies all over the Earth. These variations have been measured for decades with precise measurements from instruments called gravimeters. The standard they use is called the International Gravity Standardization Net of 1971, or IGSN-71 for short. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, called NOAA, has a large collection of measurements on their website for download. I chose three locations from this list called the Global Absolute Gravity Station Data, and I'll show you the predictions for these three locations and compare them to the measured values. I also have a spreadsheet with all the data and calculations linked in the YouTube description. I will use a process that has just two steps and uses basic algebra with no trigonometry. This is not the most rigorous method, but the results are very good. The first location I'm going to examine is Kauai, Hawaii. It's near a radar observatory partway up the mountain. The coordinates are 22 degrees, 7 minutes, 34 uh, seconds north latitude, and 159 degrees, 40 minutes, 5.6 degrees west longitude, and the elevation is 1,130 meters. First, we calculate the acceleration due to gravity only. We start with the well-known law of gravitational attraction, F equals g m1 m2 over r squared, where g is the gravitational constant, m1 is the mass of the Earth, m2 is the mass of an object near the Earth, and r is the distance between the centers of mass of the two objects. But we want acceleration, not force, so we need to use the second law of motion, F equals ma, where F is the force applied, m is the mass of the object, and a is the acceleration. We can substitute for F in the first equation. m2 is the mass of the object being acted upon, which is m on the other side. This means they cancel giving a equals g m1 over r squared. I use g and the mass of the Earth from the measurements done at the University of Washington in Seattle by Jens Gundlach and Stefan Merkowitz. The link to this is in the description. Now we need r, the distance to the center of the Earth. For this we use the WGS84 ellipsoid and the elevation above sea level of the station. These are both calculated on the distance to the center of the Earth website. The URL to this site is in the description. Input the latitude, longitude, and the elevation. Disable adjust for geoid, and the distance to the center of the Earth is 6,376,225.1 meters. We will also use this speed of point in a minute. We can plug in the values to the first equation and we get a value of 9.804,07084 meters per second squared. This is the predicted downward acceleration due to just the mass of the Earth and the distance from the center. Next, we need to subtract the acceleration due to centrifugal force. This equation is pretty simple. A equals V squared over R, where A is the acceleration away from the center, V is the tangential velocity, and R is the distance from the center of rotation. I'll use the radius and tangential velocity calculated on the webpage earlier, and we get 0 0.02 9150934611 meters per second squared. This is subtracted from the amount we got for the acceleration due to gravity alone, giving us a final prediction of 9.774919 meters per second squared. The measured value is 9.787882079 meters per second squared giving us a difference of 0 0.01296217823 meters per second squared. That is very close. Now we'll do the same process for a measurement in International Falls, Minnesota, near where our friend 
George Natchik used to live. Here's a street view photo of where the location is, just up those steps. The location is 48 degrees, 35 minutes, 5 seconds north latitude, 93 degrees, 9 minutes, 44 seconds west longitude, and the elevation is 339.8 meters. This gives a distance to the center of the Earth of 636-6494.218 meters. The total prediction is 9.819-23001 meters per second squared, and the measured value is 9.808-252073 meters per second squared, a difference of only 0.01097793685 meters per second squared. My third example is from Fortaleza, Brazil just a few kilometers south of the equator near a radio telescope observatory. Since this is near the equator, we expect to have one of the smallest magnitudes because of both the oblateness of the Earth at the equator and the larger tangential velocity. I'll show the numbers on screen and skip to the payoff. Both values are the smallest of this set. The difference between measured and predicted is just 0.01599 532522 meters per second squared. Even using this rather simple process, the method gives an extremely good prediction for the total downward acceleration. The web page linked in the YouTube description gives all the data as well as links to all my sources. If you're interested in a more rigorous method, please let me know in the comments. You'll also want to subscribe so you know when it comes out. I have a $10,000 challenge to gravity deniers to show the same process using their proposed replacement for gravity. All they need to do is provide a better prediction for the downward acceleration than gravity does. The details of this challenge are in the YouTube description as well. Anyone claiming that something else causes the downward acceleration but cannot show a similar process to what I did here for their proposed replacement? they're simply wrong. If you run into a gravity denier, please send them this challenge or the $10,000 challenge video. I found that they instantly change the topic because they are completely unable to provide any evidence for their claims.